Keeping a busy city running, especially essential services like the NHS, can have a big impact on the environment. At Birmingham Women's and Children's, we're trying something a little bit different. But this isn't my story to tell. Hey kid, I hear you're new around here, so let me give you the tour. We're giving the humans upstairs a helping hand to reduce their impact on the planet, so we all have a better place to live. That's great! But how do we make all that difference from down here? BWC had the smart idea of installing this awesome water slide that they'll call a ground source heat pump. Hold on tight! Yes! I still don't get how this is helping the humans save the planet. We're on our way to the heat exchanger, and that's where the magic happens. Well, it may seem like magic, but it's actually some pretty ingenious engineering. In our heat pump system, we want to use the natural temperature from the water deep underground, known as the aquifer, to help heat our hospital. But as we're not warm enough to heat the hospital, we need some help from our friends the refrigerant, who in turn pass even greater heat onto our water cousins at the hospital. That's correct, and this transfer begins in our heat exchanger. Now, we don't want the two to mix together, as the water needs to go back underground and the refrigerant has more work to do. So how is this possible? As the water enters the heat exchanger, it's guided through a series of thin metal plates. Each plate has a gasket or seal around it to prevent the water from leaking out. The same happens with the refrigerant. It enters the heat exchanger through a different pipe and passes through a separate set of plates that are sandwiched between the plates the water flows through. As each plate has a gasket around it, the water and the refrigerant don't touch each other. But as they're so close, it allows the heat to transfer from the water to the refrigerant. Both the water and refrigerant flow back out of the heat exchanger and go on their way. Yes, what they said. So concentrate and make sure you transfer as much of your heat as possible to our refrigerant gas friends. But I'm only lukewarm. How is that enough to heat a whole hospital? Well, our refrigerant friends have a low boiling point and turn into a gas at a much lower temperature than us. How cool! Or should I say hot? But what happens to the refrigerant molecules? Well, our refrigerant friends are now in gas form, but they're still not quite hot enough to heat our water cousins at the hospital. So they're then moved onto a compressor where they'll really heat up. To understand how our gas heats up more, we need to understand what happens when we compress or squeeze a refrigerant gas. When a refrigerant gas is squeezed into a smaller space, the molecules bump into each other more often and transform their movement energy, known as kinetic energy, into heat. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Sorry. Whoa, watch out. This is what's happening to the gas in the compressor. There are various ways to squeeze the refrigerant gas this system uses a screw-type compressor. Here's how it works. The slightly warmed refrigerant gas enters the compressor where it moves through two rotating screws that fit together with a tiny gap between them. As the gas passes through the screws, it gets squashed into a smaller space which heats the gas up even further. It's a bit too hot in here. Time to cool down a bit. The refrigerant gas then heads over to a different heat exchanger, where they pass on their heat to the water molecules that will run through the hospital. If this was a home, this water would then pass through radiators and keep it warm. However, in bigger buildings like our hospital, we might use air handling units instead of radiators. An air handling unit, or AHU for short, is a bit like a big hairdryer. Fans push the air along in one direction over a pipe that contains the water we've heated. The pipe snakes back and forth and has thin metal fins attached to it to help transfer the heat from the pipe to the air quicker. Once the air is warmed up, it moves through hidden tunnels called ducts to the spaces where the people are to keep them warm. And this whole process is powered by electricity produced from renewable sources without burning any fossil fuels so there's no extra cost to the planet. We can keep heating our hospitals in a sustainable way for generations to come. Well, Kit, that's the end of the ride. What did you think? It was awesome, but we're such a small part of the system. Are we really that important? Of course we are. We get everything started, and without each of us doing our bit, the whole thing wouldn't work, and the hospital wouldn't be able to do their part for the planet. <laughs>